Hey guys, it's me, Callie. Today I'm going to show you how I made this really cool steampunk inspired love light candle for this month's Gypsy and Witch project. I used polymer clay, some recycled items, candle wax, and a bunch of other items to create this really unique candle jar just in time for Valentine's Day or any other occasion. I hope this project inspires you and that you stick around and see how I did it. And when you're done, don't forget to check out my Gypsy sister, Miss Rita Marie. I'll leave all the links to our Facebook group where you guys can join us each month and check out everything that's going on. So stick around. I'll show you how I did it. Okay, first let's talk about what we're going to use to make our jar, and then after that we'll talk about candles. So anyone who knows me knows I love to recycle, so, you know, I have a lot of empty jars around. You can use any kind of a jar, with or without a lid. This is an actual old candle jar that was bought. For today's project, I'm going to use a coconut oil jar, and make sure, you know, wash it out good, dry it good. And the next thing that we're going to talk about is clay. And I would recommend using uh, Primo by Sculpey, but I don't have enough of any one color for today's project. So I am going to use up some of my Sculpey 3 here. Um, I'm using black today, only because I think it shows the mica powders better. Use the color of your choice. You can always paint it. Um, the next thing, I am going to be using my pasta machine. I picked this up for five dollars at a garage sale so I lucked out if you don't have a pasta machine you can just use a roller um, just as good so that speaking of roller I also have a big box of tools I'm probably not going to use many of these um, I do use my exacto knife a lot but we'll see what we use today there's some ball tools and just standard clay tools you can use a knitting needle you could use uh, toothpick. You don't need any fancy tools at all. Um, you're also going to need something to bake your jar on. I have this pan that I use just for polymer clay. I also have some texture sheets and you can use stamps. These ones are by Lisa Pavelka and they make cool texture in the clay. You can use anything to make texture. Um, I also have some cookie cutters. Our theme is love, so we're sticking with some hearts. I also have these um, push molds that are kind of cool, spring-loaded. Um, you can dust the insides of these molds if you want with a little cornstarch. Not necessary, but anyway, so some of those. And I also pulled out my extruder. Um, this one is by Makins. You can use whatever you have. And I have some discs right now. Um, the one that I use the most is this one uh, just to make long, skinny, uniform length snakes, if you will, to play around with and make swirls and stuff. So that. And I'm going to be using some mica powder. Um, I have some Prismacolor here. I have some eyeshadows. Um, you can use things from the dollar store. You can use your um, chalk pastels if you want. You can scrape those. Um, like I said, if you don't have this kind of stuff, you could always use acrylic paint. And here's some bling that I may or may not use. I'm not sure. So, different little stones. I also have some gears and cogs. I was thinking I may embellish the heart with those. We'll see. Um, I have some Sculpey Bacon Bond. It's a liquid um, clay, if you will. You can also use this to um, soften up your clay a little bit if it gets too hard. But I have some Sculpey um, Gloss Glaze. You could also use any water-based um, 
This is Minwax Polycrylic Protective Finish. Make sure you don't use an oil-based glaze. It'll interact with the clay long term. Same thing with nail polish. You don't want to use nail polish on your polymer clay. So that's it. I think that's enough. Let's get started. I'm going to preheat my oven to 275 degrees Fahrenheit and I'll be back. We'll get started. I just wanted to clarify this is more of a glue, this Sculpey Bacon Bond and this translucent liquid Sculpey or TLS as they call it is more the liquid clay and what you could use to soften up your clay. I am not a polymer clay expert by a long shot um, but I will link some of my favorite polymer clay artists below. So I just wanted to clarify that. Let's get started. The first thing you're going to want to do is get a big hunk of clay. I can't tell you exactly how much clay you're going to need because every jar is different. But you'll see as you're working with it. And just condition it, which means you're just going to knead it back and forth until you can work with it easily. And at this point, you can either take your roller, okay, and you can put pieces of cardboard on the side or popsicle sticks on the edges, and that will allow you to roll out, you know, a uniform thickness. Or you could take the easy way out like I did and use your pasta machine. And I rolled mine out to number three on my pasta machine, which number one is the thickest. So this is what I came up with. It's not perfect. It's kind of patchy. And the next thing you're going to want to do is just approximate how much clay you're going to need to wrap around. And you can either measure your jar first, um, do it with a piece of paper or a tape measure, or just do like I'm doing and kind of going along all right, and rolling here. And if your clay is not big enough, you can patch it up. All right, and this is where I'm going to take out my handy dandy X-Acto knife here. I can kind of see the seam is here. So I'll do a little extra. And I'm just going to cut down. Be very careful if you're using sharp implements. Okay, and this will stretch a little bit. So that's about what I want to work with. I'll be able to trim this up on the bottom and I will do that. But before we do any of that and even this at the top I'm going to trim and I'm not going to cover these uh, ridges here because I am going to put the top on when I'm done but if you're not going to use the top you can just go up all the way to the top of the jar. It's up to you. You can embellish that part however you wish. But I'm just going to leave this now as an approximation of how big we want to work with. All right, and I'm going to take it back off the jar. And lay it down. And the next thing I'm going to do is take my stamp, and I've actually cut these up into small sections. These are those uh, Lisa Pavelka texture stamps I was telling you about. They were all on one sheet but I didn't like the dividing line in between them so I actually just cut them out and this one I spritzed with some water because this is the one I want to use and I'm just going to go along and I'm going to do it off camera but I'll show you the first example I'm going to fill this whole sheet I spritzed it with water putting it face down I'm going to take a little wax paper here and I'm going to take my roller and I'm just going to press this in. I saw the unruly housewife doing this. And I thought, that's a good way to do it. So I'll link her channel below. Alright. And that's what you're going to get. So I'm going to, you don't want to press too hard because you won't be able to lift your clay up when you're done, okay? We still want to be able to put this on the jar. So I'm going to fill up this whole sheet and then I'll come back and I'll show you when that's done. Okay, so there you have it. And if you know me at all, you know that I always change my mind. And of course, I did in fact use all of the sheets. And I decided it's not going to matter anyway because we're going to be cutting out hearts and embellishing. It's all going to get lost in the design. So that's done. And what I'm going to do now is just use my thin blade here 
to gently take this off the mat and then we're going to be fitting it around the jar okay so let me do that off camera I'll see when I give you an idea of the progress here go I went really slow taking it up off the mat because at the edges especially it wanted to tear but I've just basically just fitted this all the way around okay and I'm going to gently start to form it and don't worry about the little places that need patching and things like that okay I'll, I'll deal with those and then trying to work out any air bubbles kind of work your way up but you don't want to distort your designs too much and I'm just going to start trimming off this excess alright and you can just you know customize it to your jar however you want and you can just gently press those seams in alright and that's what I'm going to do so I'm going to make it look nice and pretty and look I already have a little bit of a hole there I'll press this together you can always retexturize it polymer clay is very very forgiving all right and I'll pull this up the neck so I'm just gonna work with it a little bit and also I am going to cover my uh, top of my jar the same way okay so I'm just gonna do the same texture technique and cover that with a black clay so I'll see you back here when this is trimmed and that is done. Alright, this is what we're looking at. And I went all the way around. Just trimmed it a little with the X-Acto knife. And like I said, I did the lid. If you don't have a lid, don't do the lid. Um, on the edges here, I forgot that I had this. This is kind of a uh, roller and I think it's by Walnut Hollow and these little wheels come off and they have texture I have a couple different textures but I just use this leaf one to go around the edges that may change but for now that's what we have now this next part I'm going to just kind of do intuitively here like I do everything and I'm going to pull out these metal cookie cutters um, one thing I do want to do first, um, I wanted to put a heart on the top, and I think I'm going to cut one out, and um, I'm not sure. Let's do the jar first. Just randomly going to pick a spot, okay? And I'm putting this in, hopefully you can see. And I'm going to kind of rock it back and forth because obviously the jar is curved. Um, if you had a flat surface, you could use that. And then I'm just going to, I have this little rubber spatula ball tool thing. I'm going to just kind of hopefully lift this out easily. And it doesn't really matter if it's not easily because... Yeah, you know what? I'm going to cut that again, guys. See, you could see all the trials and tribulations here. Now, the idea here is I want the candle light to be showing through. So, clean that up a little bit. And I'm also going to further embellish these shapes, too, so and we'll clean them up in here um, but I'm just going to go around and around and around the jar um, I'm not sure how many I'll let you know when I'm done I'll also do some little guys um, I can do this in one shot I don't think I rocked the first one look at that very nice okay so all the way around including you know like I said these little guys too 
so put them in and lift them out. I'll see you back here when I have cut out all my hearts and trim them up. Okay, see you in a few minutes. Alright, so I'm pretty happy with this. Um, again, I'm going to be further embellishing it, so I'm not too worried. Um, I tried to trim up the edges the best I could. So that is that, and while I was cutting, I saved two hearts, which I think I'm going to incorporate onto the lid somehow. We'll see. And I also made a bunch of little tiny hearts. Um, and my idea is to perhaps put them around the edge of the lid. Again, I don't know. I'm sharing this as I'm going along with you guys. The next step that I want to do before we start to embellish, though, is to add some mica powder. And I have an assortment. I'm going to keep this kind of a... Um, it's not going to be a girly Valentine look at all, but if you want to do pinks and, you know, whatever colors you want, I'm going to keep it more um, bronzy and gold. Um, I will be giving this as a gift to my boyfriend. So um, I just have these more earth tone colors, uh, even though they're sparkly. This one is mink and pearlex. This is carbon black. Uh, this is Sunset Gold. I also have Antique Bronze. And then I have these eyeshadows. Um, this one is Caffeinated. And then I have, this is as close to pink as I'm going to get. It's like a rose gold type of thing. So, just as an example, I'll show you how I'm going to apply these. Uh, let's start with the Antique Bronze. And I'll show you on the lid. I have a fluffy old brush here. Some in here. A little goes a long way with these. And knock it back into the lid. And just lightly brush it on. And watch the magic happen. Okay, so I will be applying powder all over not only the lid, but the jar as well, and the embellishments that I showed you, those hearts. And when that is all done, I'll come back and I'll show you how it's looking, okay? Fun, fun, fun. Okay, I'm pretty happy with the way this looks. Um, I used a combination of all the colors I showed you before, and then I went over it lightly with the carbon black. It's getting all over my hands. Um, and the lid, I just did that bronze, so it's a little different. But still, I think, goes together. What do you think? Looks kind of cool, right? So, the next part, I'm going to kind of outline, if you will, with clay some of the hearts, maybe just the larger ones. I'm not really sure, but I am going to use my um, extruder, and I'll just show you. I have some clay here, just the black again, and made a snake. And we're going to put it inside. I used to have a, an extruder that you had to push with your hands and it would kill my fingers so this is a big improvement because you just twist it here like this and just like when you were a kid your play-doh extruder okay so I'm going to make a bunch of these snakes and then use them to outline the heart. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. 
as a for instance Okay, and I do want to put a little curl into it, which is so easy, and just kind of put it there, and all along, I'm just gently pressing into the clay, okay? just cut it off. Alright, so I'm going to do that type of thing around the bigger hearts. I'll leave the smaller ones alone, I think. And I'll be back when I'm done doing that. Okay, it's always hard for me to know when to stop, but I think I'm satisfied. And in addition to doing the outlining of the hearts, I also set in some of these um, cog and gear charms. They're just metal charms and I literally just press them into the clay. I didn't use any glue or anything. You can if you want, but usually they adhere pretty well and if any pop off after they're done baking, I'll just put them back on. So, um, yeah, I outline the hearts. Whoops. And I took, I tried to make it kind of look like a branches a little bit and just drew on those and that helped to adhere it better. Um, yeah, so that's what I did all the way around there. It's quite busy, as you can see. And this is about ready to pop into the oven. I'll show you what I did with the lid. I took one of the big hearts that we had cut out and I just put some of those same gears on it and outlined it and put it on here. I had originally cut out some smaller hearts and rimmed the side of this, but I didn't like how it looked, so I took it off. And that's the lid. So I'm going to put this in the oven right now. Like I said, it's at 275. This is what it's going to look like when it's done. There's the top. Okay. And you'll be able to see the candlelight peeking through the holes, obviously. So I'm going to bake this separately, just like this, on that baking sheet. And um, for, I don't know. 25 minutes, half an hour. Check your package for directions. I'll see you back here when it's done baking. Okay, these are out of the oven and cooled down. And just remember to, you know, do this in a well-ventilated area, whether you're sensitive to fumes or not. It's always a good idea. Um, so that's my public safety announcement. Uh, the next step that I neglected to mention when I told you what we're going to be using, I am going to put on a coat of um, this black Americana acrylic paint, and I've watered it down in my palette dish, and this is just going to age this a little bit. You can skip this part if you'd like, but I'm going to paint over the whole entire jar, trying to stay away from the open areas, but it doesn't really matter. Um, because we'll clean that up. And then after I've painted this on, I'm going to kind of blot it back off. And I have a wet rag for that. Um, I suppose you could use a baby wipe or something like that, but I just have an old painter's rag here. And I'm going to go in and take off most of what I just put on, just leaving behind that black to kind of linger in the crevices. Um, I just really think it adds a nice depth to the piece. And if you're going for that kind of grungy steampunk look, works like a charm. So I'm going to do that to the whole jar as well as the lid. 
and then when that's done we're, I'm going to glaze it and I'm going to use my Sculpey Gloss Glaze like I said use the glaze of your choice and once everything is all nice and dry then we're going to move on to the candle okay so I'll see you back here when everything's all painted up okay so the black paint is nice and dry I haven't glazed these yet because I remembered something else that I forgot to tell you I'm going to highlight with some rub and buff I actually have the very last remnants of my antique gold rub and buff that I'm using. I opened it from the bottom. And I also have some DecoArt Metallic Luster in Copper Kettle that I may use. But for now, I'm just going to go in with the antique gold on a small brush. And I'm going to kind of randomly highlight uh, some certain areas. Let's, let's try around the hearts. And just going to kind of go around and bring out different textures. Nothing too dramatic, I hope. But it'll just give it a little extra something um, and it won't be so dark. Same thing with the uh, gems and stuff. I'm going to kind of hit them. Um, not every piece of them, but just random, random spots. Okay? So I'm going to continue doing that. I'll go around and then, then I'm going to glaze <laughs> and then I'll show you guys. All right. So I'll be back when I'm all gilded up. Okay. The glaze is almost dry. It's pretty much dry on the jar. I'm just waiting for the lid a little bit. Um, I'm really happy with the way this is turning out. And I was going to call the jar done, and then I thought, how about wrapping a little wire? Now, I don't know. I haven't tried this yet, so I'm going to experiment with you guys. Uh, this is 18 gauge craft wire. I've already started a little spiral here because I was going to do it and then show you, but I figured I'll just show you. And my thought is to maybe make this a little bit bigger. Put this spiral on the gra on the bottom of the jar. Okay. I don't know how much wire we're going to need. So literally just use that as a starting point. Maybe if I like it, I'll take some E6000 and glue that down. I'm not sure. Uh, and I'm just going to hold that there. All right. And I don't know. Let's, let's start wrapping. I don't really want to obscure um, the windows of our hearts. But you see what I'm doing. I'm literally just wrapping around. And I will tighten this. I'm going all the way up to the top. Um, with my pliers here. Oh, see, it doesn't want to stay. That's okay. I don't know. This might not work. But I'm going to try. So let's kind of get him. Nah. What do you guys think? I'm going to... You saw what I just did. So I'm going to make this work. Make it work, Andre. I just think it would look cool with the wire, with the steampunkiness. What do you think? Or no, maybe I'm just... Maybe it's not meant to be. I'm going to play around with this. If I'm successful, you'll see me back here. Either way, you'll see me back here. So, <laughs> I'll let you know how I make it. I wanted to show you this before I cut it all off. 
this is what I came up with with the wire and I don't like it at all if I had a thicker gauge maybe or something um, the concept I had in my mind just didn't work out so I know some of you will probably tell me you should leave it but I'm, I'm gonna cut it out but just wanted to show you before I did that so that's that okay guys we have a couple of options here I mean for all intents and purposes this is done now just need to clean up the glass on the outside um, I'm gonna use you know cotton swab and maybe a little acetone to neaten that up but I want to use this as a candle jar so you have a couple of options you could use a votive candle in here maybe put some sand or um, salt in the bottom to hold the candle you could use a uh, battery operated votive if you want a little tea light you could use the little battery operated fairy lights okay there's a lot of options I want to make a candle in here a refillable candle um, when it burns down I'll be able to reuse this jar over and over again so let's make some candles the first thing that we're going to need is some type of a double boiler and a double boiler is just a pot within a pot so I have a small one here um, it's a metal pan you put water on the bottom and then this top goes like this and this is what you melt the wax in I also have a larger one that I'm going to be using in a just a regular pot with water in it so you can easily improvise one you could use a coffee can in a pot anything like that will work um, next you're going to need some wax and you can buy paraffin wax like this at the grocery store it's fairly cheap you could order it online um, you could use beeswax if you want I'm going to upcycle some old candles and I have an abundance of these taper candles that I got in an auction haul last year um, and I also have a bunch of candles that have been lit you know for holidays and things like that and they're just kind of laying around and I've decided that I'm going to melt these down and we're going to recycle that wax and pour it into our jar. So if you don't have colored candles already, you might want to use um, something like this. And this is made specifically for candles. These are color squares and these are in rose pink. And, you know, one of these squares goes a long way. And you once you melt your wax, um, and we're going to be fishing the wicks out of these candles, um, you would add, and maybe I will, I'll add just a square to the melted wax. And in addition to that, I also have some scents that I'm going to be using. Um, again, these are made for candles, but this is rose scent. And I'll be using one square with my wax. And I also have a, this is a candle making oil in vanilla. And I have some essential oil in cinnamon. So it's going to be cinnamon, rose, vanilla, um, and I think it's going to smell amazing. So do the fragrance of your choice or no fragrance of all, at all if you're sensitive to it. Um, and we're also going to use some wick. And this is from Walnut Hill. And, you know, I have no preference of wicks. I don't make candles that often. So this is what I'm going to be using. In addition, I'll also be using these wick tabs which anchor the wick to the bottom of the candle. If you don't have anything like this, you could also use a nut, like a, a bolt and nut. Um, you just want to anchor your wick down uh, so it doesn't float up when you're pouring the wax over it. So that's that. And the last thing that we're going to be using is, um, and it's really not nece necessary for this project, but um, I do have a thermometer to check the temperature if you know you don't want your wax to get too hot hence the reason for the double boiler too you don't want to put it over direct flame but I would say uh, melting temperature of about 180 degrees Fahrenheit or maybe 80 degrees Celsius um, would be about right and the next thing I'm going to do is fill a pot with water and get our double boiler heated up and I'll bring it over to the stove and I'll show you how I'm going to melt this wax down Okay guys, you can see the setup I have here. It's just a couple inches of water in this pot. 
and I'm going to have it come to a simmer and I've broken up the candles, the red ones in here and I'm just hanging this thermometer off the side I'm not too worried about it like I said once the wax is melted then it'll be ready to pour um, when it all melts like I said I'm going to add our scent and a color square and then we're just going to get our wick ready so I'll show you how to do that while this melts it's going to take quite a bit and I am going to have to fish out the wicks that are in there but it'll come out very neat and you'll see so let's do the wick and let this melt. Okay, while that's melting, let's set our wick and open up our jar. And we're going to have to cut the length that we want. So, obviously, the length of the jar plus I would do about an inch or so more um, because you want enough to kind of have above while it's drying. I'm just going to cut that and then I have one of our little wick tabs here. If you don't have one of those, you could use a washer or like I said before, a nut. This, these have little prongs on the bottom and you want the prongs to be on the bottom. So you're just going to feed your wick up through the hole. leave it about there. I'm just going to hold it and then I have a set of pliers and you could just bend down these little center pieces and they'll catch the wick. Okay, so it's like that and this is going to go all the way down to the bottom and then I also grabbed a skewer. You could use a pencil or a chopstick or a knitting needle. Um, we're actually going to wind our wick around this at the top so it doesn't fall into the hot wax. So let me see if I can show you. We're going to put this all the way down in the bottom. And when we first pour our wax, we're just going to pour a little bit to set that um, so that's basically going to be it I'm gonna tighten it a little bit before we put the wax in but I'll wrap that around there and when we do our first pour we're just gonna pour enough wax to set that little metal thing on the bottom we'll let it harden and then we're gonna pour again and as we pour the wax, we want to pour down the wick, wick as much as we can while we're pouring, okay? Then we're going to let that set for about an hour or so, a couple hours, till it's nice and firm. And then usually there's a dip in the center of the candle, so we're going to pour more wax on top of that to just set it. So that's the plan. I'm going to go back to the stove and see how things are over there, and I'll see you over there. Okay, things are progressing here very nicely. Everything is almost melted. I can still feel a little at the bottom. And at this point, I'm going to start pulling out the wicks. And then when I'm done with that, I'm going to add the scent and the, and the color. I have an old fork and a chopstick. That's about as complicated as we're going to get. And you can see I'm just going in and I'm fishing for them. And I'm going to pull them all out. I have a paper towel here. Okay, and you can save these. You can use these again, but it's a tedious process, but I don't know. We didn't have that many candles in there, so it shouldn't take me too long. I'm going to finish doing this, and then I'll see you back when we add the other stuff. And that didn't take too long at all, and I think I got them all. We'll find out when I pour it, but the next step, let's add our color and... I just showed you before what I'm using and there's two small blocks I'm just gonna put them right in and as you can see we're just about exactly where I said we should be at 180 so for whatever that's worth and then I have the square of the rose fragrance 
that's going in. And I have a teaspoon here. I never really measure anything, but we're gonna, I'm gonna take some of this cinnamon bark essential oil and add that as well as this uh, vanilla. I believe this is from Bramble and Bramble. We'll give that a little stir with our chopstick. Add some extra love. Let that all melt down. It should only take just a minute. And then I'm going to bring this over and we're going to do our first pour to anchor our wick. Okay, let's do our first pour and we're just going to anchor that little wick. Okay, that's it. So I'm going to let that harden and then I'll see you back here and we'll pour off the rest. I'm going to keep the wax warm just in a low, put it back in the pot on low so it doesn't harden up. Okay, I think that wick tab is nice and set now. It's been well over an hour and I've kept the wax nice and hot. And we're just going, I'm going to try to keep the wick as straight as possible when I'm pouring. Um, and I'm going to try to pour down the wick, like I said before, as much as possible. Fill it to about there. And we're going to let this sit. I'm going to let this sit overnight. And we'll see it in the morning. I wish you could see the sides. Um, I'll catch some footage on my phone so you can see what it looks like uh, with the hearts that are now red. Looks pretty cool. Alright, so I'll do that and then we'll let this set up and I'll catch you guys again in the morning. Doesn't this look cool, guys? I love it. Wow. Looks even better than I thought it would. So, yeah. We'll let this set up. And I will see you guys in the morning. Well, good morning. In addition to heating up my coffee this morning, I've heated up the wax again. So, as you can see, all that wax has pulled down. And this is normal okay it's all dry but you can see it's deep down there so we're just going to pour off some more wax and top it off and this will be the final pour so let's just do that and same thing i'm going to try to pour down the wick as much as i can we'll just fill up that indentation there And when this hardens, we will have a finished product. So I'll see you back here when that's done. This is what we got, guys. What do you think? I went around and cleaned up the glass a little with just a Q-tip on some nail polish remover and cleaned up the edges. And all that's left to do now is to take this wick out so I'm going to just carefully slide the skewer out and I have, I have a little knot there so I'm just going to trim that and then call it done. because I did a knot. Okay. What do you think? I'm kind of in love with it. So this is for my Valentine, but I think this project could be good any time of the year and could be adapted many ways. I hope this has inspired you, and if it has, please let me know. When you're done watching this video, go check out my gypsy sister, Miss Rita Marie, 
and I'll leave all links below to our Facebook group, The Gypsy and the Witch. I encourage you guys to join us each month. We have a different theme. There's a lot of amazing people over there. And yeah, we're having a great time. So give me a thumbs up. Like this video if you like it. Subscribe if you have not yet subscribed. I love you guys so much. Peace and love. And we'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.